If you have a toddler, then you're gonna wanna make yourself a calming corner. And that's what we're gonna show you today. We're gonna take you around our calming corner, give you a little tour of everything that is here so you can get yourself some peace in your life. Carnahan fam. My name is Kaylee. I'm a mother of three children, three and under. That's right, three and under. So you probably guessed it. We've got a whole lot of big feelings going on here for everyone, including myself. So in the last several months, we've been really focusing with our kids on developing that emotional intelligence so that they can learn how to navigate themselves and their big feelings in this crazy old world. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest, I'm just put it out there and say that this stuff, being in tune with our emotions and self-regulating our emotions and being these wonderful examples of like self-regulation for our kids that does not come naturally to me. So it's been such a good focus for our family. In the last several months, we actually put out another video on developing emotional intelligence for your toddlers and how to do that. I will link that right here in the description below. So after you've checked out the calming corner, which we talk about a lot in that video, you can check that out as well. And also right now we are in the middle of a preschool unit with our kids, My Emotions Big and Small, which will be coming out next week. So you'll have all the resources for really teaching that emotional intelligence in a play-based way for your kiddos. So be sure to come back and check out that video when it's available. But for today, we're gonna check out the calming corner. I'll show you everything that we've got here. Oh, and also we have so many tools and resources here in our calming corner that I've done a ton of research into. As a special educator myself, and then of course a mom of three, I really wanted to make sure that we filled this calming corner with the best of the best tools. So I will link all of the products that I can in the description below as well. So you can find all of these resources. Yeah, pretty much everything here is pretty easily accessible online. So I'll make sure to link all of that in the description below for you guys as well. And I am so excited to show this to you guys today. So let's just get started. Okay, so thing number one, I really think this whole calming corner thing has become a lot like more complicated than it needs to be. It really doesn't have to be anything miraculous, anything special, but the first thing you're gonna wanna do is just find a space that can be calm. Whether it's a corner of your living room, a corner of their bedroom, even some people use their closet because the kids will like that kind of closed in space. Whatever calming, quiet space you can find, bingo, use it. Okay, so we went ahead and used this corner of our kids' room. Yep, here is their room, not clean and well loved already for the day, um, but I actually had Quinn move their bed so we could put the corner right here. Their bed used to be on that wall and specifically to create our calming corner, I had him flip it around so that we'd have this kind of nestled space right here, which works really great. We have some nice wall space for our visuals and under the bed right here, there's some storage for some of the tools that I'm gonna show you. So number one, just pick yourself a space, a nice space that your child can go to and it can feel calm. It really doesn't need to be anything fancy. Just pick a space that can be consistent for them to go to, to access some of these tools. That's number one. All right, number two, provide some visuals in your calming corner. These posters I specifically made up for our calming corner. I really wanted them to be filled with color because like, isn't that what childhood is? But we have one poster that focuses all on feelings. And the first thing that we do when we come to the calming corner is name the feeling. The feelings here are all grouped in kind of a light feelings and then they're kind of color coded. Yellow feelings and our red feelings and our blue feelings and our green feelings. Things. Obviously some of these words we use more than others right now, but at least it gives us a visual. Now we talk about this a lot in our developing emotional intelligence video that I mentioned before, but a lot of the times your child doesn't have the vocabulary to be able to name the feeling themselves. So something you might do is you might come over to the common corner with your child and you might say, oh, your eyes are wide and, and your eyebrows are in. Oh, it looks like you're feeling nervous and you can show them what that looks like and talk to them about what their body might look like and feel like in that moment. That gives them the vocabulary for them to be able to later name that emotion themselves. But for now, by providing the visual and then by you naming that emotion for them, you're helping them to build that emotional intelligence. So we've got a feelings chart here. And then over here, we have a tools chart. And these are the tools uh, that we can use to help bring our bodies to a calmer or happier place, especially when we're feeling those really, 
really big emotions. And one of the things that I actually especially love about most of these tools here is that most of them don't require something special. I mean, like the fidget spinner. This one's actually use a fidget, so it really could be anything. Music, you will likely most of the time have access to at least on your phone. I guess the glitter jar is probably pretty specific. So some of these might be harder to do maybe out and about if you don't really have the specific tools, but most of these things you can do with limited or no tools at all. Now we're gonna talk more about those tools because that is actually number three, the tools. Tools are really so cool because they are a small way to distract your child's brain, often to re-regulate their senses, and then they're more naturally able to come down from those big feelings when they're not living in the heat of that moment anymore. So let's take a look at some of the tools. So little shelf here is 100% the reason why I had Quinn flip the entire bed around. I mean, like he had to take off the stairs because they were on the other side of the bed and re-put them on this side and turn it all and everything. But it's so worth it because now we have this great storage space down here for our tools. Now, now right here at the bottom, we have our Hobby Hobby books and there's some more of our Hobby Hobby books right here. And we did share this in the Developing Emotional Intelligence video, but they have some really, really great books on emotions and they're bilingual books. I feel, I feel happy. Me siento feliz. Está bien si lloras. It's okay to cry. They have a lot of really great messages in these books and they're so calming because the voices who read them and like the music embedded in them is really calming themselves. So we love to keep our Hobby Hobby books over in our calming corner. And then I will never be able to say enough good things about how Love Every supports emotional intelligence. Um, we even have two of our friends are even out in play right now. They're so well used in our house. Um, but I love having the emotions peg dolls in here. Oh, and then a lot of our books up here on our bookshelf, let's see. We have two big feelings out right now and how I feel. This is actually one of their books for the babies, but we love using them. Look at these. They're so good. And then the play date by Love Every talks a lot about those big feelings too. You can't beat the content and the real life application from the Love Every books. And we'll also have a mixture of like fun books and then just other um, social emotional books. You know, all feelings are okay. Really just normalizing these big feelings with our kids. And of course, aren't we always looking for some good books to support our kids? So we talked about our Hobby Hobby books and we talked about um, some of the Love Every supports and some of them are actually gonna be in here too. But this is our tool basket and it doesn't all always look this great, but every night when we clean up the kids' room, I do try to reorganize it so that it's set for the next day. So I'll just share with you some of the things that we have in here. We have a pair of sound canceling headphones. These are actually from when we went to go see the monster trucks. And I've also found that when you're introducing a new baby and there's a lot more crying so that some sounds and some loud, higher pitched sounds that your child's not used to, those headphones can be especially helpful in helping just to them to regulate their body as well. Um, then we also actually have this MP3 player, which is so simple. There's a very few amount of buttons on it. And then I put it on this just this stretchy Mickey lanyard. I actually really like the fact that it's so stretchy. I did contemplate putting on some like happier preschool songs on there, but I don't actually think that makes their bodies feel calm. So I wanted to leave only music on there that really helps their bodies to feel calm. This, this is honestly a goofy octopus that some sweet kid won for them in one of those like claw machine things um, and gave it to the kids. So it has the emotions on there and they like it. So that's why that's in there. And these are sensory tubes. So they work as glitter jars. There's a lot of great ways to make glitter jars. Okay, is this not so cool? Isn't that so cool? We also have these things, um, my kids call them dimples. I think most kids call them poppets. This is even calming to me, I love this thing. And this would probably fall under the hole using a fidget. This is a crazy squeezy ball. Amazing slime. It has nothing to do with slime. Don't read that. But they just, they squish so well. Like it feels good. It feels good to squish. It's like squishing Play-Doh without getting anything on your hands. While my hands are free. You remember these things? Yeah, oh yeah. They're still there. Hold on, let's do the face just because we can. Let's do the face. Mom face. <laughs> Got a couple things left in here. Um, drawing a picture. If they want to draw a picture, we have this great doodle board. You know, whatever's happening. Great. And then we'll just 
Okay, but I do have to say guys, of all of these boards that we've ever owned, because we have owned, owned quite a few, these ones are my favorite. And then this is the Buckle Barrel by Love Every. It was in one of the play kits at some point and it's never gotten put away because my kids will just never stop using it and they could do and undo these buckles forever. We love the Buckle Barrel by Love Every. And then in here are just tiny fidgets. So uh, my, my mom got it for them and they just... And these are toddler size fidget spinners. Yes, toddler size. It took me forever to find toddler size fidget spinners, but they are so great. The other ones my kids just can't hold. So these are so good. Then these are like stretchy snakes. They'll hold on to them and stretch them. Just, it feels good. And then last but not least, my sister got this for them. I don't remember what it's called. I will have to find out what it's called and put it in um, the link below. Funny story with this guy. This was actually meant to be a brushing your teeth timer. So there was like a little tooth sticker on the front of it. But Christian just loved to sit there and listen to it because it's classical music and he loves classical music. So it's a pull string, like, like, like a music box. Oh yeah, here we go. I was wondering to myself, did I forget anything on here? And I put my hand down and realized that I totally forgot about this awesome pillow. This is a vibration pillow. So it, uh, when you apply pressure to the pillow, it, it vibrates. I will give you a really nice demonstration of what it always looks like with our kids. They get the pillow and then they go. And this is vibrating my entire body. And then last but not least, we have, I don't even know what he's called. What's its face? It's called What's Its Face? That is so funny. Okay, so here is What's Its Face. And at the top, there's a little star. And, oh, you go the other way. And you turn it, and now the doggy's mad. You turn it, and he's a happy doggy. So really, that is it. And that's why I say creating a calming corner really doesn't need to be complicated. You really just need one, a place for your child to have that consistent space to calm down, two, some visuals for your child to be able to reference because they are building that emotional intelligence. It is not developed already and they need those visuals to, to be able to see the emotions, to reference the emotions, um, and also to be able to see the tools that they can use to be able to calm their body down. And then finally, number three, give them access to the tools that they can use to help to regulate their body. Now, just a few quick reminders, a calming corner is not a punishment. It's not a timeout. It's not a bad place to be or a place they get sent to when they're being naughty. It is a safe space for them to be able to learn about their emotions and how their body feels and then and then learn to manage and cope with those feelings. You're helping your child to build that emotional intelligence and to help them to feel safe and secure in these feelings rather than feeling ashamed or abandoned in those really big feelings. This wasn't a popular conversation when we were children. So if you feel like you are lacking the tools yourself, um, for self-regulation or that level of emotional intelligence that you are hoping to be at, you are not alone. I myself am still retraining my own brain to default here or to help my child to come here rather than being a reactive parent myself. So if you are on this journey with your child, go freaking you. Seriously, it takes so much strength and so much dedication and so much intention in your parenting to step away from what uh, comes naturally and what you kind of default to as a parent and to do something that is worthwhile and beneficial for not only you, but also for your child. So if, if that is you, high five. Couple quick reminders, if you haven't seen it already, definitely check out the How to Develop Your Child's Social and Emotional Intelligence video um, that is linked in the description below. Our preschool unit will be coming out next week for play-based activities to help your, like, explicitly teach your child these skills rather than um, just coming to a calming corner. There are some things that you can do to be proactive as a parent, and we will have all of that information out next week with our preschool unit. All of these resources will be linked in our Amazon list below as well. Okay, I think that's it today. If you have any questions about how to create that calming corner 
parent for your child or developing social emotional intelligence or if you are just right there with me retraining yourself as a parent and just want to be a part of this community with us drop a comment down below because we want to hear from you we love being a part of this extended family and are just so glad that you're here with us and that reminds me if you are not a part of this extended family yet and you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel do hit subscribe down below and turn on the little bell so that you receive a notification every time one of our videos go live we are trying so hard to be more consistent with just our family stage of life and everything we've got some new team members joining on so hopefully we can be getting you guys some content consistently because we have a lot we want to share and just love being with you so all that to say is thank you so much for being here with us today we appreciate you taking the time to come and just learn with us as parents and we will see you again next time you got this have an awesome day with your kids bye